If you're in the market for a chef's knife and you don't know where to start, well, here are 10 things for you to consider before making that purchase. The first thing you want to ask yourself is purpose. What will you be using the knife for? Or I should say, ask yourself, what will I be using the knife for? If you ask me what kind of knife best suits you, I can't answer that because everyone has a specific preference on the type of knife that they, they have in mind, right? Um, I veer towards knives that suit my food prep style. I cook pretty much every day in the kitchen and I tend to do very simple stuff, slicing, dicing, mincing, nothing too extravagant, nothing too fine. So for me, a Western style chef knife like this one does most of the work that I need to. I'm also huge on garlic and, and ginger and I smash those things a lot. So usually I'll use something like this, a Western style chef knife, or I'll use an Asian cleaver. However, I would never smash garlic or smash anything with these types of knives. These are my Japanese knives, my Gyodos, and they're definitely not suited for, uh, you know, rough housing, right? I would never smash anything with this. Um, I would use this, use these because um, these are great for slicing, especially for slicing things very thin. If I'm removing um, chicken meat, off the bone or if I'm moving beef off bone, this is a much better tool for me to use than this one. And so different knives have different applications. So you wanna ask yourself, what will I be using the knife for? Think about your daily routine in the kitchen or you're more like me, a guy who just really just slices, dices, smashes stuff, um, doesn't really care about being too intricate with the cuts and very seldom slices anything very thin, then maybe a Western style chef knife like this one would best suit you. So that's the first thing to consider, purpose. Let's talk about style. If you're in the market for a knife, then you've probably done a lot of your research already and there are probably a lot of knives out there that look fantastic, right? Um, they look more like pieces of art than, in, than a, a kitchen utensil and you're thinking, wow, that's a great looking knife. It looks so badass, um, but you know, am I ever going to use it uh, for the way that I intend to use the knife? I've bought knives that look great, um, and I've ended up using them as, you know, as displays because I felt bad using them. And eventually I sold those knives because for me it wasn't practical. I did like the way the knives look, but I just didn't like the way they performed. So. Um, if you're making a decision on the knife just based on look, then just be aware that it may not fit your style of, of, uh, of food prep or, uh, or the way you handle the knife. Now I'm going to show you two styles of knives when it comes to typical chef knives. The first one I showed you already, this is a western style chef knife. And what makes this a western, western style chef knife is the blade. Right? The edge here on the bottom has a curve. The belly here has a curve up to the tip. All right, this is a Western style knife. And this is a Wusthof. This is a German style knife. So a German manufacturer. And here is also a Western style knife made by Schoon. And when it comes to style, you can see how intricate the design is, right? This thing's got like 30, two layers of Damascus steel hammered to it. And then there's got this, these dimples, which is supposed to, to help release food better, which I think is a lie because when I use this, the food seems to stick onto it more than ever. But this is still a Western style knife. If you look at the blade, right? Very similar blade profiles. And these are both eight inch blades. Um, one difference is, of course, uh, the handles, right? This is more of a traditional knife handle that you've probably seen um, a chef knives, right? And here is a different handle. It's got more of a curvature to it, right? Uh, fits in the palm of your hand, your fingers wrap around it. 
Um, they both have what you call a bolster here. All right. And for this one here, you can see the, that this is one big piece of steel that goes from the tip all the way down here is the tang to the butt of the knife. Uh, for this one here, um, I actually don't know where the end of the blade ends. Uh, maybe um, the inside here, uh, inside the handle, does taper off a little bit, but I don't know if this piece of steel here where the bolster is goes all the way down to the butt. But Western style knives. All right. These are Japanese gyodos. These are what I call the Eastern style knives. And these are much lighter than the Western style knives. If you're looking for a knife that's on the lighter side, um, look into Japanese knives. All right. And I'll go into weight in a little later. Um, the Kyoto is a little different from the Western style knife because, um, as you can see, there's less of a curve towards the middle to the tip of the knife in the, in the Eastern style knife, right? Here you see there's a curve here, which is great for rocking and chopping if that's your style. Um, for this, it's lighter. Um, the tip. Right, it's thinner, so it gets into places easier to cut. Um, and also, there is really less of a curve in the profile. So this is a great knife, a great knife for slicing, a great knife for mincing stuff because you get a lot more straight surface area on the cutting board. All right, so these are the two styles: Eastern style and Western style. Knife brands. I met one guy one time on a cabin trip. And he was telling me about how much he loved shoe knives and that he refused to use any other brand of knife except for shoon. Well, I think he's very much so short-sighted because if you limit yourself to one brand of knife manufacturer, you are pretty much limiting yourself to the world of knives. I mean, there are so many knife makers out there. There are, you know, you have the, the big knife manufacturers and then you have the mom and pop shops that make their own brand of knives. And I think if you really want to get into knives and you really are exploring um, into you know, what type of knife to get, do not limit yourself to a specific brand. Um, do your research, go out there, read the reviews. Um, I'm, I'm willing to bet there, there has to be a knife out there um, that's made for you. Um, a big box retailer you know, of, of a knife maker may have the knife that suits you, but that doesn't mean a smaller knife maker doesn't have a knife that suits you. So keep an open mind and think about what kind of um, um, knife you want without thinking about the brand. So here, I'm gonna show you a few of my knives I have and you can tell that I'm not brand loyal. Um, I like different types of knives and um, you know, it doesn't matter if they're expensive knives or if they're cheap knives. I just, you know, if I like the knife and it suits me, suits my prepping style, then I'm going to buy it. So the first one here is the Victorinox Fibrix. This is one of my favorite knives. This is my Marataka AES Gyoto. It's that Japanese style knife. This is my Asian Cleaver made by some, some company, I think in Taiwan, called Thunder Group. It's like, a, it's like a $13 knife, and it's lasted me for almost 10 years now, so it's, you know, pretty amazing. Um, Global knives. I'm sure you've heard about Global. Very unique design. Um, actually, a very, very good knife. Uh, I have a few of these, and I've also sold a few of these. Um, Shun. Um, not my favorite knife brand, but um, I'm always trying to change up um, different styles of Shun because I haven't yet to find a Shun knife that fits my cutting style. For some reason, I just get really horrible feedback when I use a Shun knife. Um, I don't know why. This is my Shun Canso uh, because I've been getting horrible feedback with the Shun Classic and the Shun Premier. Um, I'm willing to try this out. Um, for, uh, I get better feedback from this knife. And um, even though this is the cheaper knife, much cheaper than this one, I feel like this is a better knife than the Shun Premier, but that's just my opinion. 
This is my Misono UX10. This is my Japanese Sentoku. Also, um, one of my favorite knives to use. And here is my, my Wustoff, my Wustoff Classic. Uh, another one of my favorite knives to use. So, as you can see, I have um, different knives from different brands. Uh, I pretty much use, use them all. I don't use every single knife you know, every day. I do stick to three or four knives primarily through the week. But if I do feel like changing it up, um, I will do so. So I like having the options. All right, so think about the knife brand. Um, but don't think about sticking to one knife brand, right? Um, read the reviews, find out what each brand has to offer, and then um, you know, open your world to you know, the knife market because there's a lot of fantastic stuff out there. Let's talk about knife weight. If you haven't considered how heavy the knife is, then you definitely should because not all knives weigh the same. Uh, for example, my Wustoff Classic is the heaviest knife in my collection. It clocks in at about, at about 9.47 ounces. This is a Western style knife, like I said before. I love the weight that this knife has. Um, it, for some reason, it makes chopping things and cutting things very enjoyable. I like having that weight. Now, if you're thinking you don't want a heavy knife, you want something on the lighter end, you might want to consider a knife maker, a Japanese knife maker, because their knives tend to be on the lighter side. The Shun Premier, which I showed you before, is also a Western style knife, but made in Japan. And this thing clocks in at about seven and a half ounces. That's two full ounces lighter than this knife. And while two ounces does not seem a lot, it makes a difference. I do feel the difference. So if you really think that you're a person that would get tired easily from holding a knife, doing a lot of knife prep work, then go for a lighter knife. Um, but even though I like the feedback from heavy knife, I also do prefer a lighter knife. Um, that's because sometimes I need a lighter knife to do a different type of food prep. So for example, if I am uh, removing, removing chicken breast meat off the breastplate, off the bone, or if I'm removing, uh, trying to remove meat or beef or pork away from the bone, I tend to not use this knife because I think it's too heavy. And that's when I reach for this. This is my Misono UX10. This thing is at 5.75 ounces, so much lighter than my Western, Western uh, Wustoff classic knife. And the reason I like this knife when I'm doing um, like removing of meat from bones and so forth is because not only is this light um, but the thinner profile um, you know the tip is thinner on the side it lets me get into the crevices a little bit easier and since it's light I can maneuver this knife much easier there's less weight and less impact on my on my wrist because when I'm removing bone and stuff I really need to contort my wrist I really need to be more flexible and I can do it with this knife because it's, you know, slimmer profile and lighter. And I can do the same thing with this, no problem. But when I'm going through pounds and pounds of chicken meat and trying to remove, say, the bone from the chicken thigh, um, my wrist will get tired. And I'd rather not have that unnecessary strain on my wrist um, when I am doing certain kitchen prep, kitchen prep work. So consider the weight. Um, Japanese knife makers do tend to make knives on the lighter side so if you want something on that end of the spectrum look for a Japanese knife maker if you like something hefty you like something beefy um, you know like Wustoff German knife maker I think they make um, very nice hefty knives I mean this thing is solid I feel like it's built like a tank I smash stuff um, you know, I don't cut through bone or anything semi frozen with it because that's not its purpose. When it comes to smashing things, you know, the weight and the wide profile definitely makes it a great tool to do so. Let's talk about budget. How much are you willing to spend on the knife? I can tell you, spending hundreds of dollars on the knife doesn't mean it's the best knife for you. So I want you to be budget conscious and that you don't really need to spend a lot of money to get a really good knife. Now, for example, the Victorinox Fibrex. This is one of my favorite knives to use. And it costs around, I think, 
forty dollars when I when I bought it about three years ago. It's still hovering around the price point, although I have seen it as low as thirty-one dollars during Black Friday and during the holidays. Very good knife. I think for a knife that's from the low to mid price point of knives, um, this one is very hard to beat. The next tier, which I call the mid tier to mid to high tier, is the Wusthof Classic. This knife, I think, on Black Friday at or at department stores during their semi-annual sales that they have like ten times a year, um, this knife is always on sale. And if you're willing to wait and wait, you know, for this knife to be on sale, wait. You know, wait until the holidays or during Black Friday because this knife can be bought brand new for $99, uh, which is, I think, a heck of a bargain for a knife like this. I actually bought this knife for $50 off eBay um, used. So I do buy knives used uh, off eBay. I think um, because I am also very budget conscious, I don't want to spend full retail price for a lot of knives. And for $50, I get this pretty much brand new used but it doesn't look used uh, of course when you buy buy knives off eBay you really want to look at the pictures and read the description very carefully you are taking a risk of purchasing a knife that's pre-owned after all you don't know what the owner did or what the previous owner did to the knife you don't know if um, they abused it you don't know if they were you know using it to open Amazon boxes you just don't know. So always um, buy it, be aware when purchasing knives from eBay, but I think eBay is still a great place um, to buy a knife if you're on a budget. The Misono UX10, I got this brand new off eBay for $127, I think. Um, this knife retails for, I think, $180 to $220 around that range, it's not a cheap knife. I would never pay $180 or $200 for this knife. I don't think it's worth it because I don't use it enough. But I bought it off eBay, brand new in box for $127. And how did I buy it at that price? Because the box was damaged. That's it. Box was damaged, but the knife otherwise was in great shape. So um, I got, I mean, I, I think, you know, this is highway robbery buying this this knife brand new at $127. Amazing. So if you're budget, budget conscious, just remember that the most expensive doesn't mean the best. Uh, think about, again, purpose, what you, need, you know, what you need the knife for. And also look into the eBay market, look into the marketplace, secondhand market. Be very careful when you do purchase. Uh, read the description, look at all the pictures, Ask the seller questions if you have a question about the item that's being sold. And of course, you're gonna be bidding with other people. So of course, there's no guarantee um, you're gonna win the knife. But if you really are, go want, are going the eBay or used knife route, you're gonna to have to scour eBay pretty much every day. Um, put them on your watch list and so forth, because that's what I did. Um, the Shin Premier, I actually bought damaged and I repaired it myself. Um, this knife retails for about, I think, $150 and up, maybe $150 to $175 brand new. I got it for $75. The tip was a little bit damaged, and I managed to fix it myself. So um, $75 is, all, you know, amazing deal for a knife like this. And it was pretty much brand new as well, except the tip was broken off. So I uh, managed to get three really great knives off eBay that were damaged uh, or advertised as the box was damaged and I end up saving a lot of money that way. All right, so always keep the budget in mind and don't overspend unless you really want to overspend. Knife handle comfort. If there is anything that's more important that needs to be discussed on this, it's knife comfort. And I'm not talking about how comfortable the knife makes you or how happy it makes you. I'm talking about when you're holding the knife, is it going to hurt your hand or is it going to fit like a glove? Very important because every knife manufacturer, even though they may have similar styles, the way they finish the knife on the back, uh, the way they finish the bolster, the way they finish the handle, 
it doesn't mean they're all gonna contour to your hand or your grip style. For example, I am huge on the pinch grip. This is how I cut probably 90% of the time using this grip. And the funny thing is, when it comes to comfort, the Victorian X Fabrics and the Woodstock Classic are the two most comfortable knives in my collection. Uh, I feel like the Firebrex is made for pinch gripping. Amazing. And for some reason, I thought the Wustoff would suck uh, for pinch grippers, but this has ended up being one of my favorite knives to pinch grip. And the pinch grip is very easy. You just gonna wrap your fingers around the handlebar, right? And then pinch in like this. So this is the pinch grip, right? So if I show you the pinch grip on other other knives, so this is the Shun Premier. Here you see the bolster is smooth too, right? Um, the spine here, the back here is relatively smooth, it's not sharp. So it looked like it was going to be a great knife for pinch gripping. And so when I try to pinch grip this knife, it actually hurts my hand. It, it does not suit, from, for some reason, the pinch grip for me. I feel too much pressure right here from this part of the knife. So very uncomfortable. And then here I have my Japanese uh, knives, right? And these are not suited for pinch grip. Uh, I can tell you right now, this is probably the most uncomfortable knife to hold for pinch grip, but it's not for pinch gripping. This knife is really good for slicing. So when I slice things or when I use this knife, or when I use this knife, I do not use a pinch grip. I would either, I would probably just use this grip, which is like a slicing grip, like this. All right. So again, a lot of control this way. And when I am removing, removing meat off bones, it gives me a lot of control. Uh, if I try to hold a pinch grip like this, it just doesn't feel natural. It doesn't feel comfortable. So uh, definitely not for pinch grip. So think about your grip style. Um, unfortunately, you cannot tell how comfortable a knife is from looking at online pictures. Um, the best way to do it is to go to a store that sells cutlery. So you can go to the Williams Sonoma, Macy's, Crane and Barrel, you know, any place that pretty much sells knives or um, any place that can lets you sample knives, do it. Go in there, hold the knife with your hands, it should feel natural from the start. Um, if you feel any pain or you feel like you have to modify your grip just to, you know, um, contour to the knife, then that's not the knife for you. All right, so I think comfort is probably on my top three, top three things to consider um, when it comes to purchasing a knife. This is very, very important. Um, if you don't pick the right knife, if you buy a knife that's expensive, razor sharp, you know, can pretty much, you know, cut anything. But if it's not going to be comfortable, guess what? You're not going to use it. Let's talk about heritage, about the knife itself, the history of the knife or the history of the knife maker. If you love to own a piece of steel because of its, of its roots, because of its story, um, that might influence you on your knife purchase. Uh, let's see here. Um, not my favorite knife, but I wanted to own this style of knife. Uh, this is the Morotaka AS Kyoto. I wanted to own it because I love the story. I, I understood um, that you know this thing, you know this family has been making knives um, for centuries and centuries, and so. A lot of those traditions, the knowledge, you know, that's all in this knife. And that was really the only thing that kind of influenced me to buy this was because of that. I, I did like the style. There's nothing wrong with purchasing a knife um, because you think it looks kind of badass, it looks cool. Um, but I also like the way they manufactured their knives. I was very compelled by it. And then, you know, I have some knives here. Like this Victorinex here, you know, I don't really don't understand. I know it's Swiss made. I don't really understand the history of this knife. I just know that it's a really good knife, and that's why I bought it. But you know, if you want a knife that's got some history to it, um, you know, uh, like 
sword knives are made in Japan in the same city uh, since the very beginning or maybe the the bladesmiths back in the day used to make samurai swords they make katanas and then after the samurai period was over um, those those sword makers still had to make a living and so they went away from making swords and they ended up making knives razor blades and so forth so if you like things that have meaning to them um, or have some sort of historical aspect to them there's some sort of heritage to it and you love that kind of stuff consider that as part of your knife purchase um, you may you know want a piece like that for a collection um, maybe not more so for, for cooking or prepping food but just to have and I've seldom used this uh, I love this knife just because the way it looks but um, you know, this is one of the things that stays in my knife knife block because I rarely use it. But still a very nice, cool um, item to have just because of its heritage. Material. The steel that your knife is going to be made of. Alright, so when you're going to do your research, or you've already have, you've probably read about this knife has this kind of steel. This knife has this type of steel. Um, this knife has steel that comes from another planet. Who knows? Just know that there are really two types of steels you need to be aware of. One is stainless steel, and another one is high carbon steel. And the difference is this knife, high carbon steel, high carbon steel is very hard, harder than stainless steel, which means the knife will retain a better edge. Um, and you can also get a very, very razor sharp, razor thin blade. The, th the problem with high carbon steel is that it is prone to rusting. Um, some knives um, that uses high carbon steel also react to food. So it might actually cause uh, food to taste a little differently. Um, and they do take a lot more maintenance. I actually prefer stainless steel um, only because I am a low maintenance guy in the kitchen. Uh, for this, I feel like every time I cut something, I have to wipe it dry before I have before I can do something else in the kitchen. If you're a multitasker like me, you're chopping something, you're going to the sink, you're going to the stove, you know, you're going to the oven, then you go back to the chopping board, which means you have to leave a knife out for a prolonged period. Stainless steel is the way to go. And then you're gonna hear about what the steel is gonna be made of during your research. For example. Global Knives, they keep advertising, hey, we use a special steel called Chromova. And Chromova is basically a chromium, molybdenum, and vanadium. That's the mixture they use to make their steel. It gives a steel, they say, um, it gives it a stainless steel finish. And also lets, you know, lets, you know, that you have a razor sharp blade, which is easier to sharpen. Um, I can tell you, even though it's a stainless, it still rusts. Um, I actually had to remove rust from this knife because it did actually uh, start to go on me. Only because I really thought stainless steel made it wouldn't rust. But um, at the very least, it does last longer than, say, a high carbon knife um, when it comes to rusting and so forth. Um, with high carbon knives, too, they might also start to develop a patina, a pattern, a dark pattern over the blade over, over time, over use. Um, so if you want a knife that looks pristine, pretty much pristine every time you finish using it, then uh, stainless steel is probably the way to go. Stainless steel is also going to be a little softer than high carbon steel. Um, softer meaning it's not going to retain its edge as long as a high carbon steel knife's edge. But that shouldn't be a problem. Um, um, a lot of these knives out there today do hold, a, hold a, uh, an edge really, really well. You want to make sure that when you buy a knife, you get a honing steel. And the honing steel, what that's going to do is that's just going to realign, realign the. Uh, that's just going to realign the edge. All right, this is the honing steel. If you haven't figured it out, it's going to realign the edge um, when you when you use the knife. And remember, this does not sharpen the knife. So even though you keep realigning the edge with this, um, your knife is still going to get dull over time. So what I, what I want to tell you is, when you purchase a knife, you want to get a honing steel and also a sharpening stone. Uh, the sharpening stone, at least 1,000 grit. 
um, that will actually shave the metal off of the edge to create a brand new edge. And if you have a stainless steel knife, it's probably going to be easier for you to sharpen to sharpen over a, uh, a knife that's got a harder steel, like a, a high carbon steel. Um, every knife maker has their own their own proprietary steel. I think Shun calls theirs VG10 or VG Max, right? Uh, here, the Masona UX10, they said they use a Swedish stainless steel, so a little different. And the Wusthof actually also uses a chromium, uh, molybdenum, and vanadium mixture of steel, just like the Global. But um, I doubt that the the uh, percentage of compounds of each ingredient to make the steel are the same. I'm pretty sure each each um, each manufacturer here has their own proprietary uh, ratios when it comes to creating the uh, the steel for these blades. All right, so keep that in mind. If you are a low maintenance person, you don't want to spend too much time cleaning cleaning the knife. You just want to wipe it dry and put it back to the block. Um, then go for stainless steel. If you do like a high carbon high carbon steel knife because of its um, edge retention, um, just keep in mind that you might need to dedicate a little bit more time to keep it in very good shape. Another thing to consider is, will other people be using your knife? Say you have roommates, a spouse, girlfriend, boyfriend, children. Are they going to be using the knife? Or are they going to be treating the knife better than you can treat the knife? Or will they treat the knife worse? Meaning, are they going to leave the knife out? Or are they going to toss it into the sink? So if you are planning on purchasing a fancy knife costing hundreds of dollars, uh, keep in mind, you might get into the wrong hands. And that knife may be damaged and you may not be you know you may be wasting your money and so just make sure you have an understanding with other people in your household um, that this knife or the knife you're going to be purchasing needs to be cared for properly tell them that in advance don't tell them that until they use it uh, because at that time um, it may be too late um, you know knives like these knives like these on the higher end just because they're expensive doesn't mean they're indestructible. In fact, I've seen a lot of knives that are just um, damaged from improper use. Say someone's trying to um, cut into bone or cut into something very tough, or they're just tweaking the knife just a little bit just to you know get something dislodged you know in the food or some or or, or maybe you're trying to use, cut water, watermelon rind with a knife like this and you're cutting in and you're just trying to like finagle it, um, that would actually damage the knife because, well, it's gonna break because the knife isn't made for that. Now, the people in your household don't understand that, then they're gonna damage the knife. Uh, for me, I have a knife that is pretty much an anyone can use knife. Um, if it gets damaged, I don't care. If it gets dropped, I won't care about the knife, but I probably will care about the dent made in my floor. Um, if it gets tossed into the sink, I probably won't care that the knife gets damaged only because um, this is the knife everyone else uses. They know in my house not to touch my other knives. And so my one knife for everyone to use is my Victorinox Fibrix. This thing has been dropped, abused, left in the sink, left on a cutting board for days without washing. And guess what? Lots of battle scars, you guys can see here. But the blade is still razor sharp. Um, I do, you know, sharpen this from time to time. And um, after all the abuse, this knife is still standing up. I mean, this thing's a trooper. This thing is a tank as well. And um, this is why I have it. This is a, a knife for everyone in the house. All right, so. Consider who all the people are in your house. Consider who else will be using your knife and make sure you educate them on how to properly use a knife if you let them use your knife. The last thing I want you to consider before purchasing a chef's knife is respect. Are you going to respect the knife? Meaning, will you be using the knife for its intended purpose? 
or you're going to be using the knife to open Amazon boxes, to do anything else with it, um, along with preparing food. Um, only be, this is important because if you don't respect the knife, if you don't use it for, for its intended purpose, you're going to end up damaging the knife. And then you're going to start to complain, well, I just spent $150 on this knife and it chipped. Um, chances are that you're not using the knife properly or you're not cutting things um, that the knife is supposed to, to made to cut. If you're using it to hack through ribs, bones, uh, and so forth, um, you're going to damage the knife. I've seen a lot of knives that have a lot of chips along the edge because people are just doing this, right? like this or they're trying to cut through something very hard or they're forcing pressure on it and even though the knife is expensive that's not what it's made for um, you know a lot of times you go on ebay you look at damaged knives you're gonna find find a lot of knives have the tips broken off and i've never broken a tip off the knife so i'm not sure how people do it but i'm envisioning people are just just trying to i guess use the knife to pry stuff or to use the knife as leverage to open something. Um, that's how I can see the, the tip breaking off. Or maybe people are just throwing the knife into, into the sink, right? When you throw it into the sink, it's a, you know, it's a hard impact. The tip hits the edge of the sink, the side of the sink, and the tip breaks off. So that's how I see um, a knife being damaged. But that also means the knife isn't being, isn't being respected. And if you also you don't properly respect the knife, meaning just you just lay it out on the cutting board, or just throw it out somewhere, or just throw it into the sink, um, you can cut yourself. Um, you can get hurt. So I mean, the knife is very sharp, uh, especially the very high end knives. They come pre sharpened, and these things can cut you, and you may not even feel it. You're gonna see the blood. And then you're gonna start freaking out um, only because you had no idea how sharp the knife is. So make sure to respect the knife, use it only for its intended purpose. Uh, make sure anyone else who uses the knife also respects the knife. Um, as long as you do that, you should not be cutting yourself. Keep the knife nice and sharp, uh, keep it honed. Uh, when it gets dull, you should definitely wanna sharpen it because um, a dull knife actually is very dangerous because. There is, there is basically um, not enough friction for the edge to cut through, cut through, uh, say the meat or vegetable, and you might slip, right? Because the the blade is so blunt that it won't cut anymore. So if your fingers in a way, or something's in a way, some body parts in the way, who knows? Um, you might end up cutting yourself. Um, so be careful. Another tip for you is if you are somehow holding the knife and you drop the knife. Do not try to catch the knife. Uh, you end up hurting yourself. Or rather, you damage the knife, get a new one, or fix it, then you having to um, go to the ER and uh, getting some stitches. All right. So those are the ten things I want you to consider uh, before purchasing a knife. So you know the ten things to consider before purchasing a chef's knife. Now keep in mind, you don't have to consider all 10 things. Um, you pick the things that are most important to you, and then you make a decision there. I'm gonna show you really briefly my favorite knives and why they're my favorite. Uh, first of all, uh, all my knives that are my favorite are all stainless steel. I actually do not like high carbon steel knives. They're too much, too much maintenance. Um, the Victoria Fibrics, this is the most affordable knife that I have. This is one of my favorites because it is the most affordable and also the most comfortable knife to hold, especially for the pinch grip. No other knife in my collection comes close. So if, and it's actually not too heavy. I think this one clocks in at about 6.46 ounces. And this Wustoff here, which is the hefty one is at uh, 9.47 ounces, so about you know much lighter on, on this one. And so when I need to do a, a lot of prolonged cutting, if there's a dinner party, I have a lot to prepare, hours and hours of preparation, 
Um, I need something light and I need something really comfortable to hold and I will use this. This is the Vitonix Fibrex. Amazing knife. My other favorite knife is my Wustoff Classic. Uh, my, and I like the heft. This is pretty much my everyday knife, my dinner prep knife. Um, smashing garlic. I do that almost every night. I use this. Uh, slicing, dicing, chopping, mincing. Um, this thing gets most of the work done. Stainless steel, that's why I like it. Um, second most comfortable knife to hold with a pinch grip. And then the third knife is my Masono UX10, also stainless steel, of course. Um, very light, one of the lightest knives I have in my collection. I think it's my second lightest knife. And I like this because of the slim profile and um, its, ed its edge retention is really good. And I only use this if I need to do very thin, delicate knife work, such as very thin slicing and uh, also removing uh, meat from bones and so forth. But I would never use this to cut into bone or cut between joints and so forth, bone joints and so forth, because that would damage the knife. And then my other favorite knife is my Asian cleaver. Um, I use this occasionally because I feel like I have to use it. Um, this is the first knife I ever purchased when I started to live by myself. And the reason I bought this uh, knife before all my other knives is because I grew up in the restaurant. I grew up in the kitchen and so this was all that was offered to me in the back of a Chinese restaurant where I was doing a lot of food prep. So I got to to um, understand this type of knife. I got to be very familiar with this very knife at a very very early age and um, I was familiar, familiar with it and it was a $13 knife that I bought in, in New York and over 10 years I think this knife is now over 10 years old it's still with me still holds a great razor sharp blade no damage um, just a nice knife to have in my collection um, I think everyone should own one of these because it's so versatile great for s smashing things scooping things and chopping things so so there you have it those are my favorite four knives and those are also the 10 things for you to consider before you purchase the knife. Thanks for watching. If you do like this content, please put a like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.